that lived through the Civil War, there's a lot of denial. Um, but you had one student who was, who was uh, obviously uh, asking questions. Uh, um, is the younger generation prepared to take a fresh look at... Uh... You know, uh, depending on the film, you can notice that uh, the kids or the new generation, it's, it's like a cloning of the parents. Mm -hmm. So uh, you see mainly it's always the figure of the father who gives the, the point of view and the sons or the kids have always the same, the same point of view, the same uh, allegiance to the party or mainly to the sect. Mm -hmm. And this is a major problem because usually when you are 14, 15, uh, you, you, have a revolution, uh, you, you have revolution in yourself and sometimes you question your, your father especially. Uh, but here it's not the question. Huh? Uh, uh, and you can notice that, for example, everything related to history and politics, it's always uh, linked to the father, not to the mother. And this is also another uh, figure of the patriarchal society in which uh, the father is the reference for every political and uh, uh, religious even issues. So, uh, yeah, and, uh, and so they have two schools. They have the school of the family, which is the strong uh, school. And the other school, uh, it's not uh, talking uh, at all. Uh, there is a denial of the, of the civil war. And as you notice, the, the history stops in 1943 with the independence. Usually, uh, history must start with the independence. Here, it stops with the independence. Any questions? Actually, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting you brought it to the forefront. You know, about history lessons and how young people perceive the history. Um, there's a couple of things. I mean, one thing you said, I've just been to Belarus, yeah? And they deny, they are in denial, I think, the older generation about the war. You know, and I just feel it could be the parents' denial of the sort of the civil war that it was so horrible they want to not forget it, but sort of to lay, to keep it down. I just wonder. Another thing too with history lesson, I don't know if there's any history teachers, but I think it's appalling. My history <laughs> lessons were very poor here in Europe, I thought. And it's nice, you are, you know, I thought it was very refreshing. You know, that history lessons are so important. Mm -hmm. But I don't think, I mean, I didn't have any good history lessons at all. You know, and I, I just think it's valuable. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah concerning the denial, uh also based on the film, as you see, there is a passage in the film uh, where you see the city. And so even in the reconstruction of Beirut, uh, there was an erasing of all the traces of war. Uh, there is no, no place to remember civil war, and there is no statue for the civil war. So there was a, a complete erasing lack if we uh, want uh, to forget. And so this is why since 1990 there was a lack of uh, amnesia. And uh, this is a very dangerous amnesia because uh, every 15 years uh, you can have a new war. Uh, and since uh, history stops and uh, nobody talks about the other uh, history or the contemporary history, and uh, even you don't find books about civil war in schools. So, uh, so people or young students will only be based on the oral uh, history uh, coming from their fathers. And, uh, 
This is why uh, at the university we have uh, students who are following blindly the same leaders that their fathers followed. And uh, they are mainly the, the, the world lords. So uh, uh, this is a, a cycle that, uh, that it's uh, repeating itself instead of uh, renewing something. Um, I think I've read that something like 65 percent of Lebanese school children go to private schools, um, and I noticed the list there. They seem to be mainly private or belonging to um, religious associations. What what happens in the mainstream state schools for history teaching? Yeah, I want to mention first that uh, the public school has refused categorically that uh, we film in it, and. Uh, the Ministry of Education said that uh, the subject is a bomb. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So no, no chance for bombs. So uh, we filmed in private schools uh, in, in Beirut, and so you can see we have uh, uh, Muslim schools, uh, Christian schools, and one secular school. Mainly, I think the figure is that um, maybe more than 50% uh, go to public school. And there is the, the s same curriculum, because uh, if, you, if you see in the film, mainly they, they are uh, learning the same history somehow, what happened in 1943. This is not, uh, the contradiction doesn't come really from the curriculum, since uh, they have an official exam. It comes f more from uh, the other school, uh, the, the parents, the neighborhood, uh, and uh, since uh, most of the time also they are from one color in the school, so there is no chance to discover the other, the other which uh, lives uh, nearby. So, uh, and this is why the other becomes uh, someone very strange and someone who you can be frightened of. And uh, uh, even though, uh, and uh, there is something very interesting uh, if we want to compare uh, with the Syrian Syrian model. In the Syrian model, we saw that uh, the state uh, is the, somehow the secular uh, dictator. Uh, here, the, the sects are the indirect uh, dictators. What is the ratio of Christian and Muslim today as against 1943? Well, you know, in heaven on the last uh, statistics date from 1932. <laughs> <laughs> official statistics but uh, because it's very critical but uh, it's around 35% Christians and the rest uh, Muslims but you know it's not uh, so easy because uh, in the Muslims uh, you have uh, Shia uh, the Shiites which are around 40% and today uh, the relation Shia Sunni is not so well, so the problem is no more Christian Muslim today, for example, it's more about Shia Sunni. So, uh, yeah, every 20, 30 years we have a new kind of division. Um, my experience is very limited. I read the book Pity Bella, which was yeah, so depressed afterwards <laughs> to know what to do. Please, do you have any recommendations? Your film is excellent. Wonderful. Uh, how do you dare say what? How you would, how you would wish it to be different in ten years? Ah, uh, concerning uh, <laughs> <laughs> the question <laughs> of uh, well, the the ideal solution is to go to a secular state because uh, like this, uh, and as you see in the end, uh, everyone maybe knows more about religion than about the country and. Uh, this is the problem that until now we haven't managed uh, to create a, a really a unifying state. So every community has its own Lebanon. And uh, finally they all love Lebanon, Lebanon but which Lebanon? <laughs> <laughs> so, and they fight, every sect fight for Lebanon, but for which Lebanon? And then uh, every sect defends itself from the other. And every sect has a... Uh, uh, relation and international relation with abroad to have power over the partner in the country. So uh, like this, this is why unfortunately in the film you can see that uh, we have a diversity. It's for example different from Syria where if you ask the question about the uh, enemy and the uh, leader, you will have I think the, the same answer. Maybe not now, but uh, mm -hmm. some weeks ago. But, uh, uh, but uh, th this diversity 
unfortunately uh, uh, lead us uh, usually to uh, killing identities instead of uh, having diversity and cultural diversity to build up a modern model and the secular model. So uh, if we cannot manage to go toward a secular model, we will have uh, every 10, 15, 20 years religious conflicts and each time it has a label. So uh, 20, 30 years ago it was uh, Christian Muslims, today Sunni Shia, tomorrow uh, I don't know. You see it's secular model, yeah? Yeah. How would you build that up in a country? I, I just wonder. The beauty of the country? The yeah, the, the, yeah, this is a very good question because uh, now I, I would say it's very idealistic and, and it's, it cannot, you cannot do it. Why? Because when you see in the, in the education, the, the strong group, uh, the, every community has the, the strong uh, schools. So whenever you want to put your kids, mainly you send them uh, to uh, the school of the community. Or if you have more money, you have some secular schools, but it costs, it's more expensive. Uh, and since everything is linked to the community, and the community has its own uh, entity, it has its own uh, hospitals, uh, uh, schools, uh, services, so, uh, and sometimes it's uh, stronger than the state. And this is why uh, you are more related to your community. So the community or the sect comes first and then the state. And uh, if we go like this, uh, nothing will change. And it's not something new, it's uh, historic. But uh, unfortunately, when you go also to a civil war, uh, you dream uh, through, through a wall and, this, uh, and a war and a civil war to have changes. Uh, unfortunately, the, the civil war increased these divisions instead of uh, uh, building up a new generation that thinks no more sects, uh, Lebanon first, or, uh, or the country, or patriotic uh, sense, uh, no. Uh, more and more, uh, maybe every, every person is uh, linked to, not only to the area where he lives, maybe more to the street also. But, uh, I mean, last week I was in Beirut and there was an anti-sectarian yeah. March. I mean, is this something that's becoming more yeah, popular? There is. I mean, I know it's a small movement, but... Yeah, it's a, it's a movement that's been uh, on since March. Uh, uh, on Facebook, it had around uh, 20,000 members. Uh, but this is the problem. So mm -hmm. when you... 20,000, for example, if uh, one uh, of the political parties, which are all linked to one sect or the other, uh, say go and protest, you have uh, around a minimum 200,000 going mm -hmm. down. When you uh, invite the people to go for a secular state, you have 20,000. It's, it's a minority and uh, unfortunately you can, uh, I don't know how we can make the change mm -hmm. because we're asking people to become secular at the age of 18 or 20. When, uh, after they have studied uh, for 18 years in a, uh, in a religious school. or it's, it's a little bit difficult to ask mm -hmm. someone to become a citizen at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> Any more questions? But, uh, what the voting age is, and do all uh, females, um, adults and young women, are they all allowed to vote as well? What's the voting uh, age and uh, can women uh, vote? Ah, uh, okay, of course women can vote. Until now, <laughs> uh, until now uh, the, uh, the voting age is 21, but uh, there was a demand, uh, so it would be uh, 18, but until now it's 21. It's also one of the requests of the young people. So they, because they are waiting for them to be completely sectarian to vote. <laughs> <laughs> By 21 you have them. <laughs> Great. Um, any more questions? We're, we're actually running out of time as well. Okay. So, um, if there's any more, we'll be in the bar for a few minutes. So, yeah. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>